I've been at med school for about three years now, and I've come to see that it is very challenging. Um, and not only in the sense that it's quite content heavy, there's a lot going on. So I wanted to do a video talking about sort of a typical week in the life of a med school student, but a little bit differently. So we're not going to go for a timetable or we're going to go and see what I'm doing at med school because it's the summer holidays at the time of recording. But I'm going to talk to you about what actually you do at med school. So what do you actually go to? What kind of lessons do you go to? Hopefully it gives you a little bit more of an insight. So if that sounds like a good idea to you, let's get straight into the video. Alright, so there are a couple of different things that you do in med school and you can generally sort of categorize them into number one, uh, anatomy dissection slash clinical skills, number two, your lectures slash tutorials, and number three, your placements. So those are three general boxes and we'll go through each of them at time. We're going to start off with your placements because that's what I've been doing a lot more of recently. So placements are basically blocks or groups of weeks that you spend in hospital and you don't go to university at all you go every day nine to five to a hospital that you've been allocated to to a specific ward to a specific bay to a specific team that are going to be looking after you so this is you know at imperial it's like hammersmith hospital charing cross chelsea westminster a bunch of hospitals like this that you're allocated to now placements are really more for the more senior years so year five and six are your clinical years at Imperial, and these are years where you spend pretty much every single day at hospital. You do all your learning there, you do all your preparation there, all your exams is done in hospitals, and that's because they want to prepare you by that point to being an F1 or foundation year one doctor. So this all happens in hospitals and you pretty much spend all your time with patients doing things like blood taking, uh, cannula insertion, catheter insertion for males and females, uh, and you observe things like operations, you observe clinic meetings, the whole premise is that you need to get a just life at a hospital. Now placements don't as commonly occur in years one to three, although in year three you do spend actually a lot of time on hospital, maybe 20% of your time at university and about 80% of your time in hospital. And in years one and year two it's pretty much non-existent, you spend all your time at university apart from two weeks in year one and four weeks in year two. Now let's talk a little bit more about what happens in years one to two because that's where you guys, if you're prospective medical students, will be spending more of your years. So at school you've got lessons, you know, maybe 30 students in a class, you've got one teacher and that's pretty much how every lesson is from year seven to year 13. Now when you get to university it's slightly different. So you've got more of a focus on lectures. So lectures are basically massive halls full of pretty much the whole year group, which at Imperial for us is around 350 to 400 students in one hall and one lecturer at the front delivering a lesson. Now, this can go well or badly, um, depending on how much you are paying attention. They can be really helpful, but in all honesty, they can sort of not be very useful because at the end of the day, it's not very interactive and also, it's not pleasant to be sat in a lecture theatre full of 400 people for five hours on end. And it doesn't really generate the most productive learning environment. Which is why at Imperial now they're trending more towards tutorials, um, supplemented with online lectures, recorded lectures, because they're just easier to learn from and they save you a lot of time rather than having to come down to the lecture theatre, sit in the packed hall and listen to people. Tutorials, on the other hand, are actually very similar to the lessons you have at school. You've got 30 people in your little tutor group sat in a classroom, you've got two or three tutors who are going to be running you through material and most of the time you'll be off in groups of two or three with your friends going through the tasks that are set for you and the tutors will basically be circulating around the classroom, you know, asking you if you need any help, going through the things that you've done, um, giving you feedback and that's a far more productive way of learning. Not only that but they normally are better if you want to learn stuff for the exam. Lecturers can quite easily go off into random tangents that most likely won't come up into your exam because they're far too complicated because at the end of the day the lecturers who are giving you your, your talks aren't teachers, they're actually experts in their field so they're going to be talking about really complicated things. 50% of the stuff probably isn't going to be relevant to your learning but tutorials are run by tutors who you know create the exams for you, who are part of the faculty at the university, who are involved in creating the syllabus, so they will teach you the stuff that is genuinely relevant to you. So that's why tutorials are far more useful than lectures in my opinion, and you get quite a lot of them in years one and year two. Now the final thing we didn't talk about is the clinical skills and anatomy dissection. So these are sort of external things and they are basically supplementing your learning. So anatomy dissections for us occur in years one to year two and then clinical skills kind of take over in years three to year six. So your anatomy things are basically 
dissections or prosections. So those are human cadavers that have already been dissected and are waiting for you to inspect. And you have those in years one to two at Imperial. And they basically serve to teach you the anatomy of the human body. Two years is normally enough for this, for you to go over the key, you know, fundamentals of the human body, of each organ system, and, you know, the functions of the muscles, the nerves, the arteries. And so it allows you to see into the body before you go into your hospitals and go into operating rooms where you're going to see actual live human people being cut open. So you actually know what's going on. Now in years three to year six, that anatomy slot is taken up by clinical skills. So you don't spend time with human cadavers anymore. Instead, you focus on learning how to treat current people who are living. So that is learning how to take bloods, learning how to, I don't know, give a blood transfusion, learning how to give IV fluids, those kind of things. And those are called clinical skills and you learn those from years three to the year six. Now those are not a massive part of your time. They'll normally happen once a week at your hospital. Um, and anatomy will again normally happen once every two weeks at university. So they're not particularly frequent things that you learn about, but they are very important since they don't take up much time in your you know, weekly timetable, it's even more important that you spend time on them at home going through them because they are really the fundamentals that you have to know in order to do well at medicine. And then outside of your timetable, you've got a bunch of other things. So you can do extracurricular, clubs, societies, you know, you can sign up to uh, various things like music, sports, drama. You can do roles of leadership, which are like your academic representatives for the year group or the uh, welfare representatives for the year group. Those are sort of roles if you want to do um, and then you can join the student union from there so there's a whole bunch of things that you can do at university outside of the timetable so there's a misconception that in medicine it's crammed and you're super busy every day of the week you've got to spend in the library which is totally not true you have a lot of time on your hands and you can pretty much pick on anything you want apart from that that's really everything and um, there's not much else for us to talk about in the timetable sort of life of a year one two or three medical student um, year four for us is slightly different I've done a video on it already if you want you can go and have a look at it it's our BSc year um, so that's gonna be very different I have no idea what that's like so I'll take you along with me and share with you what's going on there but apart from that if you've got any other questions you can let me know in the description down below in the comments or you can DM me on Instagram apart from that I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next upload see you in a bit